man. This is a little bit different. Nine times out of 10, 9.5 times out of 10, you're joining me first thing at the shop. But today, we're going from the back ass country town of Christmas, Florida, over to the town of Lacanto, Lacanta, Lacanto, Lacanto, I think it's called, Florida. We're gonna go see a friend. We just saw him eh, two videos back or so. He's helping me out with a couple things. I'll fill you in with some more details when we get there. And this is gonna be a good one. I think they're all good ones. And now, you're watching the forest green? No. Lime green? Maybe. Billy Eilish Roots Green? Okay. Channel of YouTube. Welcome to Bodie Vision. Hey, so what is up and welcome. Thank you so much for joining me on another video. So if you don't recognize this place, I don't know what you're doing. I don't know where you're at. We got the LS Miata over here. Really cool to see this thing again. I don't know if you guys remember, but I actually painted this a little while ago. That was a cool, fun project, and the Subaru is somewhere around here. Taylor, what's up, man? I don't know nothing much. Just another day. Another day in working paradise, on, right? Working on this beautiful piece of machinery. Well, so the original reason why the original reason why I came over here is because when Taylor picked up the Subaru, I actually gave him my computer for the LS. It's just what do you call it? The LS computer? Yeah. Yeah, right, see you. Right there. But we were talking about it for a little bit, going back and forth, and Ben's Miata actually has a different kind of wiring system and mine. Right. So what do you think? What did we end up deciding? So yeah, he we got here and or he got here and he was looking at Ben's car, which has a terminator, Holly Terminator in it. And I was like, you know what? I always try to, like, I originally try to steer people towards the stock ECU because, like, you have the ECU, you have the wiring, like, you can do it somewhat cheap. But it's like, at a minimum, you're going to spend $300 on a mediocre conversion harness, and then you're going to spend $500 on HP tuners, and then you still need a wide band and a coolant temp and a oil pressure gauge. So, at a minimum, to have it right, you're going to spend $1,100, $1,200, $1,300, bucks, or you can buy the Terminator for right at a thousand bucks, you get a wide band with it, you get a three and a half inch screen that you can have all your gauges on, coolant temp, oil pressure, tack, you know, air fuel ratio, everything you want, and it's a thousand bucks, and it's a way more capable ECU than dealing with a stock ECU. It's got self-learning, auto-tuning, like everything you need. So the more we talked about it, it's like, honestly, you should just go that route right. and for, messing with the stock ECU stuff. Car, for what my car is, for the support that's out there for it being yeah. nothing, yeah. I might as well just get one thing that's pretty much plug and play. Oh yeah, We're it's gonna plug have and all play. the gauges, everything's gonna be in that one unit, which is perfectly fine for a street yeah. car. Yeah, yeah, no, the three and a half inch screen is like plenty big enough for a street car. Right. And you can see everything you know on there, you can tune on there. Right, so the main premise is I'm just gonna spend a thousand dollars or so to buy yeah. the Terminator, and that's gonna entail save me money in the future yeah. also, because yeah. I'm not gonna, gonna have to buy everything. any gauges. It's, no it gauges, just covers no everything. Nothing. Yeah. And that's that's the way to go. So I guess we've just been hanging out a little bit. We actually went to lunch in the LS Miata. So that was cool. sick. Yeah, so, yeah that's fun. I went to take them to a, this cool lunch spot, local lunch spot, but they're closed on Sunday. So yeah. it's kind of disappointing. But, but did you get some rips in the Miata. He's never been. I mean, yeah. he drove the Miata around when he was painting it. Just, just at the like shop. But yeah, to like go rip it, rip it. So right. that was kind of cool. Yeah, which was super sick. So I guess cool to kind of come over here we're going to get back to the shop i'm going to get back to work go ahead and start cutting the frame of the accord or figuring out what i want to do and it's exciting if you want to come to the shop you can or i know you got stuff going on <laughs> yeah yeah i gotta finish this thing man so always more work to do yeah for sure well taylor it was nice seeing you man cool hanging out for yeah, sure yeah always I, nice i appreciate the help and to know that i have somebody that has done many ls swaps as yeah. i'm doing an ls swap and that's something that I really need help with is the wiring and stuff like that. So yeah. this should be pretty straightforward. It's so simple. The Terminator is so simple to wire. Like you plug it in, you run power and ground, you run key on power, wire your fuel pump up. I mean, it's like, I mean, if you can, uh, if you could put a radio head unit in your car, you can put a Terminator in your car. So at this point it is a no brainer. And I think that's what we're going to do. And that's, what's going to cover the wiring. So everybody, thank you so much, Taylor. I really appreciate don't it. Don't forget, don't forget your stock oh, ECU in case yeah. you want it for something. If anybody wants to buy this, it's right <laughs> here. <you> <laughs> All right, Taylor, we'll All see right. you later. See you later. Man. Drive safe. Thank you. I appreciate your help as always. And as always, it's kind of cool coming over here, seeing, seeing some of the stuff and yeah, I'll see you guys back at the shop. And just like that, we are back at the shop now. Now, I was actually talking with Taylor about wiring and everything that we just told you, and I'm not even close to being at that point yet, but it's always a good idea to have some of that stuff in mind because when I get there, I wanna be ready. So I wanna get all the wiring figured out. As this is going on, I can go ahead and order it. It can be here, and if it's sitting here a couple of days, that's fine, as long as I'm not sitting here a couple of days just waiting on it. So now, let's get into the car. We gotta get this cut out. And before we can do any cutting, I gotta get all this plastic stuff cleaned out of here. 
got to start pulling our front subframe, rear subframe of the front section. And just, I just got to get all this stuff ripped out of there. So with this build, this is a major milestone that we just crossed. Almost everything's out of the Accord that's gonna be out of there as far as anything that's gonna be in the way from the entire power plant of the LS1, the subframe from the GTO, all of that stuff is gone. And like I said, this is a major achievement. And also, I kind of started to, I kind of started to get some of the stuff out of the interior as well. Trying to figure out exactly where my trans tunnel is gonna be. I'm hoping I can use some of the Accord interior pieces, but we'll just have to see how that goes. If I can, cool. If I can't, well, it's not a big deal. But anyway, so now the build and the pace of this entire process, I feel like it's kind of just been really quickly. We're going to get the motor out. Boom, motor's out. But now is when we're going to get into details because now I got to actually figure stuff out and I want to present it in a way to you for you to understand if you want to do something like this on your car in the future that you'll be able to use all these videos for references or it'll just be entertaining and cool to hear. So now I want to get into the details a lot more. We're going to kind of slow down, take a step back, work together on figuring this out. So the next thing that I want to do, if you can see the frame rail, right here how that shape is just kind of crazy that shape is not going to be the shape that it will remain part of this bottom will probably have to be cut off we'll just have to see let me throw this subframe in there just to kind of mock it up and then i'll give you a little bit more insight on what exactly i'm thinking so as i'm getting this all situated in here this is an extremely loose representation of what the subframe is going to look like inside of the accord where it's gonna live. I'm gonna have to box in everything and linking it to the frame over there, probably come straight forward, hit that point. That's probably gonna be cut up just a little bit. And I might overcut and then build it up rather than trying to make sure that's extremely precise because when I build it, it'll be a nice big plate coming down to there. And then as you can see, we made these reference points in the last video, that one right there. That's gotta be perfectly in line with the ball joint because that's where the wheel's gonna sit. We're using the GTO suspension and everything. And that's kind of a loose representation of exactly where it's gonna live. So another factor with that subframe that I had to figure out is how high do I want it? Because the higher it is, the more likely the manifold is going to be colliding with the hood and then I'm gonna have to modify the hood. And I was kind of thinking like that. What if I make it as low as possible so that way the hood can close, the motor's gonna be in there, everything's gonna be all good, the hood will close. So that's what I was initially thinking, but in reality, I don't care about the hood right now. My main concern is that the oil pan is going to be roughly an inch or two higher than the frame rails of the Accord or the bottom, you know what I mean, not the frame rails, but the bottom of the Accord's unibody section, I want the oil pan to be higher than that. So now if the hood has to be modified, I can do that. I can address that when we get there. So I want to sacrifice the hood for the oil pan to be up high enough so that way we can get the car nice and low as opposed to making the motor fit in there and having the car never be able to be nice and low. We're going to make sure ride height is on point. If the hood has to be modified, so be it. I'll make that happen. The next thing that I got to figure out is a exactly how to make this subframe how to make that subframe live in there I'm gonna have to make some measurements I'm gonna have to kind of wrap my brain around what exactly I'm gonna do and then I'll let you know and also before I figure that out the entire firewall probably from there up and over that's all gonna be cut that's all gonna be pushed back and everything that's gonna be just fine and then where the motor mounts right there it comes about a foot forward for where the belts all are and that's exactly where this bar is meaning we have from there to all the way about up in front of here to put my radiator so I don't think that the radiator is gonna be a problem I think that everything should be fine I don't see any major obstacles thus far
so that was just the very first, the very initial cut. I'm definitely gonna have to cut more. I'm gonna have to massage it out, make it all where it's perfect, but I at least wanted to get some stuff out of the way so that way I can get the subframe where it's supposed to be. Then after that, I took the subframe, I threw it up there. I made some measurements for reference for myself over here. Move these out of the way. I ended up finding the midpoint on the subframe and that's right there and then right there. Also I measured where this hole needs to be as far as how far back from the firewall needs to be and that's actually right here 8 inches and then that lines up with that hole right there. And then the idea is this is going to merge into the current frame rail. The current frame rail is going to sit on top of this but also overlaying it just a little bit and then I might box it in with some some kind of plate metal or some gussets or something along the lines. So what I want to do next is I want to get these to be bolted here and then I want to throw this entire unit up under the car and then eventually I'll be able to weld these in and then the subframe will be able to be dropped. This is just very early in the process. Don't ever get discouraged when you're doing something if it looks a little bit weird. Don't call it weird until it's done and I know it's going to look a little weird until it's done. And I actually found those holes by making sure all the framing was sitting in the right place, centered amongst those reference points that I made, and then from underneath, right there, see that hole? That's what I just put my Sharpie through, and that's right here. And after the fact, I went through and I measured and made sure, made sure this to the edge was the same as this to the edge, this to the edge, and then this to the edge, and then also from the front to that point, front to that point back to this point, back to this point, making every single thing left to right, front to back is the same as I'm going. So I wanna go ahead and get those drilled out so that way we can bolt the new frame to the subframe and then eventually try to figure out exactly where the new frame is going to be welded into the car indefinitely. So right now it is actually the next day, many, many hours later, and I think I got it pretty solid where it's going to eventually be, or where it's going to be. Since the last clip, I've done a bunch of trimming all over there. I cut out the frame completely where it was pinch welded together, but the strength's gonna be added back through when this gets welded back in. And also I have these quarter inch gussets that I'm gonna be putting all over the place. I have big ones, small ones. So it's gonna be stronger than it was before for sure. And also I have all these reference points. Center point right there, center point right there, center point right there, and then also right there to make sure everything's good left to right. And then also I measured these while the old tires were still on. Center point on the fender is gonna go to the center point on there because that's where the whole hub assembly sits. And same with this side over here. And how I actually found those is I have this little laser light right here that just makes a perfect line like that. And then if you unlock it, and it actually levels itself levels. So you never have to worry about setting it up. So you know this is straight with the earth. That's gonna go through the car. So all of those lines fell right in line with these green lines. Now we gotta take everything out and start to prep it for welding. I gotta clean up all the metal. Also, I'm gonna make these, these nuts. I'm gonna weld them to some plates so that way it's not squeezing just on the actual metal two by four. It has a larger surface area to squeeze on and I have quarter inch plate steel that I'm gonna weld those to so that way it becomes like a big washer. And then once everything's all set up, that new metal that I made, you'll just see, you'll see how I do it.
So as I'm doing this, one of the most important factors and something that I can't figure out exactly right now is I need to know that the wheels are gonna be centered amongst the wheel arch and that all depends on where the subframe is. So if I get everything together and I think it's good and then the wheels are too far, then what do I do? So the way that I compensated that was by actually making these slits in the frame rail. So you see this slit right here and this one right there. So the idea is I'm gonna bolt everything up and then it's gonna be bolted like this and I'm not gonna touch it for a long time until the car is actually sitting on the ground with the wheels, with everything. And then if I need to adjust it, I can move it forward a little bit or backwards a little bit. Hopefully the adjustability is within the tolerance that I made of that slit. If it's not, I don't know, I don't wanna think about that. So I'm gonna put it on centered and then bolt it together and then leave it. Then once I get everything in the car, once the wheels are on the ground, once the motor is in there, once the suspension is all done, cause keep in mind the tubs are gonna be custom as well because we're gonna be using the GTO coilovers or at least that style because this is a McPherson style setup. So all of that stuff, McPherson, McPherson, whatever. So all of that stuff is things that I have to consider. So after everything's set up then, I'll actually weld these shut completely. That way it can never go forward or backwards, but I just wanna make sure in the future, I have all of my bases covered and hopefully the amount of bases that I have covered do the trick. just fine these are just exactly out of the welder exactly how they came out a little bit warm still those will do and then I just ran these under a wire wheel and that's fine so if you didn't exactly understand what was going on these will be welded to those frames so that way all you need to do is undo the bolt from the bottom and I wanted to make sure that these were crown nuts or had that little flare at the bottom so that way it had a lot of meat to weld to so I think this will this will work Man, so that is tacked, that's in there. It's actually a little bit more than tacked. First I tacked it, then I went around with the laser again and confirmed that everything was exactly where I wanted it, or where I believe I wanted it. Now it's a little bit more than tacked, and then I think the next thing we gotta do, we gotta go ahead and get these shock towers out of here, all of this stuff, because the GTO shocks are gonna be going through there. So I'm just gonna cut them out, and then I'll rebuild them. I'll be tubbing the front fenders, or partial tubbing, I don't know exactly what they call it. And also, I wanted to point out that the firewall, I know you see the firewall is exactly where it is, but I don't wanna cut too many things out without reinforcing the body. I figured if I just do the front section, then I fix the front section and make sure it's nice and strong, even stronger than it was before, then I can go ahead and I can move on to the towers. Then when I rebuild the towers, then I can move on to the firewall. So the car itself is never gonna be really cut down or all cut down at one side, because I would have to reinforce the body. And when I do the trans tunnel, I might even look into doing that, just running some bars across, because I don't want the car to be real loose, or maybe that subframe is good enough as far as holding the car together. But man, it's crazy. These videos, they might be coming out a little bit slower than what I would like, because I wanna get a lot done in each video. Honestly, at the end of this video today, I was hoping to be a little bit further ahead than I actually am, but the days just keep going, the hours just keep ticking, and the time keeps on moving. So with this, I probably had the subframe in and out, in and out, probably 50 times. I was just placing it, cutting it, measuring, drawing something else out to cut, cutting that, putting it back, and this is what we have thus far. So also I wanted to point out that this is where the steering rack goes from the Honda. The steering column is right there, so that should be in line. The headers are gonna come down this way. The relationship between the steering column and the headers are gonna be exactly what they used to be before because this is the subframe, that's the motor, and those are the headers that we used before. So I don't think that we should have any issues. And also the frame rails up in this section there and over there, that's actually wider than it was in the GTO. So I think as far as clearance, we should be fine front to back. I'm gonna get into the trans eventually. Clearance on the firewall. We're gonna cut that out, build out the trans tunnel eventually. And we're just gonna keep this thing rolling. I would like to test fit the motor in here soon without actually cutting out the trans tunnel just to see, just to see how we look. 
but I'm not too sure when that's gonna happen. Either way, I know we're making good progress. So with this front, I'm a little bit, not embarrassed of it right now, but right now I understand it looks extremely tacky. It looks like there was a bar just cut out and welded in there, but that's exactly what it is. But I'm going to be finishing this out. There's gonna be all types of metal merging the old with the new and making it look finished out. I'm gonna put some dimple dies in there somewhere if I can figure out where I wanna put them. So if you're not happy with how it looks thus far, I would encourage you to subscribe and check out the next video. And just don't judge it too hard until the finished product is there because right now we are in the middle of it. I'm by no means done. It's gonna be cleaned up well finished and everything like I'm saying. So it's getting a little late. I'm going to get out of here. I hope you are as hype as I am. And if you are, I'd encourage you to like this video, comment, subscribe, do all this stuff. You know what it is, YouTube. You know what it is, YouTube. You know what it is, YouTube. I'll see you on the next one. I'm out.